If you're watching this video, you probably have a Regents exam coming up, specifically the Life Science Biology test, which is relatively new compared to older Regents exams. And after the first administration in June 2025, a lot of students and teachers complained that it was too hard. So in this video, I'm going to provide some of my best advice to prepare you for the Biology Regents exam. If you want a basic content review, please check out my other Regents review video, which I'll link in the description below. This video is going to focus specifically on tips and tricks so that you can be prepared to be successful on the exam. All right, so just an overview of the format. Remember, it is a three hour test with 45 to 55 questions. The questions are a combination of multiple choice and constructed response, which just means you are writing the answers by hand in the testing booklet. Now you'll have an answer sheet where you will fill in the answers to the multiple choice questions and then a test booklet for the free response or constructed response. You are supposed to complete all your constructed response answers in pen unless you are asked to create a graph or make a drawing and that you can use a pencil. You will be provided with scratch paper to do any scratch work and a four function calculator that you can use while you're taking the test. Even though calculations may be pretty limited, for the majority of the questions on the test. Okay, the first thing to prepare yourself for are graphs, models, and reading. A lot of people criticized the June 2025 version of this exam and called it a reading comprehension test or a logic test. And that's because every question involves some sort of reading of a passage, an interpretation of a model, or reading and reviewing data from a graph. The second thing you need to be aware of is that this will probably pertain to content you don't know or haven't been exposed to in your biology class. The questions are meant to test skills and the application of the scientific practices that you learned in your biology class, but maybe in a new context. So for example, the June 2025 exam had questions pertaining to engineering and erosion, hox genes, tough vocabulary. But if you focus on those skills, those science and engineering practices that you learned in your biology class, you should be able to do well on this test as long as you're not too worried about seeing things that you haven't seen before. And as always, I'll go through some more test taking strategies in a little bit, but I think it's helpful when you have a long passage or a complex model to read the question first, then you can go back and interpret the reading or the model with the question in mind. And remember, some of these questions will be several sets of questions paired with one model or one graph or one reading passage. So it's always a good idea to skim through a few pages together at a time to see how much you'll be focusing on any one graph or model or reading passage. Now that there's been at least one administration of this test, the New York Office of State Assessment will start releasing past exams on their webpage, which I'll also link below. So you can open up the site, read through the old test, and familiarize yourself with what types of questions, answers, the format, the length of the test. They even post the answer keys. As of now, there's only one exam posted, but as more exam dates go by, more past versions of the test will be posted and released for you to review it. All right, I'm gonna go over a few constructed response tips and then we'll get into some more general strategies for the test. So when you're doing your constructed response, you're writing usually in complete sentences in response to a specific skill like support a claim with evidence and reasoning or describe the evidence presented in the graph. And here are a few stems to get you started with answering those types of questions. You can just state what the effect of the data is. So there is blank effect, blah, blah, blah as shown by the graph, and then you explain whatever scientific principle. This shows that energy is lost as we go up in trophic levels on a trophic pyramid, or whatever topic the question pertains to. But if you're asked to show some sort of reasoning, always connect your data to a scientific principle that you learned in class. If you're asked to describe evidence, you might want to say something like, as x increases, y increases, or decreases, depending on the data, or as x increases, blank result occurs. These are really easy ways to describe what is happening in a graph. Now remember, you did a bunch of investigations as part of your biology class and part of the test says that you will be tested on those investigations but not those investigations specifically you will be tested on the themes and the skills that you practice in those investigations not necessarily the labs themselves so do not spend hours pouring over every last detail of the procedures of the investigations you did in your biology class you just want to know the general overall scientific themes associated with each one so one thing that should give you a little bit of hope if you are worried about your score is that your raw score from the test will be converted into a curved score so this conversion document specific to the june 2020 test was also published online. I'll link that below. But again, this will change depending on each exam. The curve score is going to be what you'll get one, two, three, four, or five as far as a score for the test, as well as a percentage score that might be used in the grade book. But you can see that you don't have to get a lot of questions right in order to get a decent final curved score. Let's go over a few more exam strategies before you take this test. Remember to read the questions first and then go back and interpret the graph, do the reading, look at the model, and have the question you'll be asked in your your head as you're reading or doing your interpretation. 
Next, remember to eliminate wrong answer choices. If you can eliminate at least two wrong answers and then guess on the last two, you have a 50-50 shot of getting the question right. And lastly, it's okay to skip the hard questions and move around to different sections of the exam, but always come back to the ones you skipped and put some sort of answer down. You wanna to try to answer every single question on the test and move through it in the most time effective way possible. So pace yourself. Remember, you do have three hours to take the test, so time it out and make sure you know what you have to come back to when you have a limited amount of time left. And lastly, if you wanna do some last minute review of the content that's gonna be on the exam, be sure to check out some of my other resources, including my New York Life Science Biology Regents Review video, which I will link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. Good luck on your exams and I'll see you later.